Hey everyone, and welcome to the premiere episode of Happily Gamer After. Now when I was a kid, some of my most memorable gaming experiences came from point-and-click adventure games, like the ones from LucasArts and Sierra. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, The Secret of Monkey Island, King's Quest. These games were epic adventures full of fun characters, crazy puzzles, and more dialogue choices than a choose-your-own-adventure book. But then, for the better part of a decade, adventure games just kinda disappeared. It wasn't until 2006, when Telltale Games resurrected Sam and Max, that adventure games began sort of a resurgence. And then, with the huge success of their critically acclaimed adventure game The Walking Dead, Telltale created kind of a subgenre called Choice Consequence Games. So now, after seven Telltale games that follow that exact same formula, French developer Don't Not Entertainment has come and seriously raised the bar with Life is Strange. That was so surreal. After wandering through a vision of a massive tornado brutally destroying a small seaside town, Max Caulfield wakes up in her classroom at the prestigious Blackwell Academy, an art school for the exceptionally talented in the fictional town of Arcadia Bay. A photography geek and all-around hipster, Max is anything but ordinary, and befitting of the game's title, Life is Strange. After a series of unfortunate events, Max discovers she has the ability to rewind time with the aid of her best friend, Chloe Price, Max begins a week-long journey of self-discovery and time manipulation while trying to uncover the mystery of Chloe's missing friend, Rachel Amber. Heavily inspired by cult classics like Twin Peaks and Donnie Darko, Life is Strange mixes supernatural elements with the mystery of a small northwestern town where everything isn't quite as it seems. For the most part, the gameplay is typical of the choice consequence genre in that you walk around various locations, sparking up conversation and choosing your responses from a list of options, resulting in branching conversational paths that alter your relationships and expand different plot threads. The big difference with the game comes in the form of Max's rewind ability. With these powers, she can go back in time and change anything she's done to get new results. For example, she can gather information, then rewind and use that information to sway the discussion in her favor and learn more than was previously possible. Weren't you supposed to keep your mouth shut? Many of the game's puzzles revolve around Max's use of the rewind power. In another example, when trying to prove to Chloe that she can manipulate time, Chloe shows Max the random items in her pockets. Max memorizes these items, rewinds to before she saw them, then proceeds to tell Chloe exactly what's in her pockets. Other puzzles include fetch quests and some more complicated investigation techniques, but it's the rewind ability that really sets the gameplay apart from its predecessors. Uber cool. The game's story is an emotional roller coaster of difficult choices and heavy consequences. Similarly to games like The Walking Dead and Tales from the Borderlands, the conversational choices you make determine how the story bends and twists around the overarching plot. But unlike those games, Life is Strange does an incredible job of making you feel like your choices truly matter. Between my first and second playthroughs, certain choices took the story in drastically different directions, resulting in new events, a thematically changed story, and radically altered dialogue. The game's contextually changing script flows smoothly, with reminders of the choices you've made that blend seamlessly into the conversation. Other than the supernatural element, the story deals with loads of teenage melodrama, peppered with controversial issues like depression, teenage pregnancy, rape, and assisted suicide. With its mature themes, powerful drama, and shocking episodic cliffhangers, Life is Strange does an amazing job of keeping you emotionally invested in its characters and plot. The relationship between Max and Chloe is one that plays out beautifully over the course of each of the five episodes. Their emotional bond grows from a childhood friendship to an extremely strong love for each other. Chloe's character develops so broadly, going from a seriously unhinged punk rock troublemaker to a selfless and loyal companion who will do anything to keep Max safe. Throughout the first episode, I was kind of annoyed by Chloe's unwillingness to listen to reason, but by the end of the game, I had developed my own emotional bond to her and absolutely loved her character. 
The supporting cast fills out your basic character archetypes, but are layered with a wide range of personalities, each with their own issues and agendas. Victoria Chase, the beautiful and pretentious Queen of Blackwell and leader of the Elite Vortex Club, is the Rachel McAdams to Max's Lindsay Lohan. Nathan Prescott, the son of a powerful family that owns Blackwell and reigns over Arcadia Bay, is a dangerous and unpredictable antagonist. Kate Marsh is a conservative and wholesome girl, but troubling events bring her down a much darker path. The much appreciated lightheartedness comes from Warren Graham, whose geek ramblings and romantic interludes provide Max with a comforting escape from the dark secrets of Arcadia Bay. To be honest, there are so many characters to interact with that, at first, you might have trouble keeping up with them. Fortunately, Max keeps a journal that contains in-depth character profiles, though not for every character, and a highly entertaining recap of the story's events thus far. The graphics in the game are just beautiful and invoke a sense of realism in what looks like a watercolor painting. In fact, the game's textures were entirely hand-painted to achieve an idea that the developers called impressionistic rendering. Every location is incredibly detailed, from the posters littering the high school walls, to Chloe's nostalgic teenage bedroom full of CDs, cigarettes, and dirty clothes piled everywhere. Much of the environment can be interacted with, bringing up a stylized version of the item you're looking at while Max delivers her internal thoughts about it. She looks super stoned. In fact, Max keeps everything you've ever looked at on file in her journal, which is helpful when trying to remember clues for some of the game's more complicated puzzles. The game runs at a silky smooth 60 frames per second on PC and current gen consoles, which makes the game even prettier when running at max settings. My only real gripe with the game is that even though the motion capture is superb, the lip sync doesn't feel very natural. It was heavily improved in a patch and in the retail release, but compared to games like Uncharted and Infamous, it could be so much better. I did suffer a weird glitch in both of my playthroughs. During an emotional scene in the final chapter, Max's mouth just stopped moving. Though the words kept coming, the whole thing just looked bizarre. I feel like stage diving. Let's thrash this place. Now, if modern alternative rock is your thing, then you may find yourself needing a copy of the soundtrack. With a lengthy list of licensed tracks and a mellow acoustic original score, the music is extremely enjoyable and really fits with the modern teenage vibe. From the indie folk tunes coming from Max's headphones to the heart-thumping electronic music of the Vortex Club party, every chapter of the game is mixed with songs that complement the emotions of the moment. Some of the game's most memorable scenes are paired with great music that'll be stuck in your head long after you've put it down. Life is Strange is a game that's similar to other games I've played before, yet so different and so well done that it really stands out from the crowd. The time travel ability adds an exciting new element that brings something fresh to the genre. The graphics are great, the music is top notch, and the story is literally one of the best I've experienced in recent memory. The characters' relatable personalities and charm bring the world to life in a way that's engaging and emotional. With its powerful character drama and gripping plot, it's no contest that Life is Strange is one of my favorite games of 2015. Even after two playthroughs, I still can't stop thinking about Life is Strange. My friends and I have had countless conversations about the game's alternate plot threads, what choices to make to achieve different endings, our feelings for the characters, interpretations of events. The list goes on and on. The game is just fantastic. It hits all the right notes and really raises the bar for the genre. Now, rumors are swirling about a possible second season, but that it would only thematically be a sequel and won't necessarily share the same characters or setting. Regardless, I'm definitely looking forward to whatever Don't Nod has up their sleeves. For now, if charming, mysterious, and dark character dramas are your thing, I highly recommend picking up a copy of Life is Strange. It was recently released as a retail version, as well as a limited edition with a 32-page art book, the entire CD soundtrack, and director's commentary for every episode. Until next time, I'm Adam, signing off.